Hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, artist here on YouTube, and today I want to talk about how to mindlessly doodle. And I'm going to do a Copic background for a doodle, but you can do that with watercolor or other mediums. I'm also going to open and baptize my new Peter Pen. I bought myself a new toy. And then at the end of the video, I will show you how in speed video form that I made this iguana drawing. All right, let's get started. I've been in a doodling mode of late and partially is because I've did a doodling class. These are drawings that you'll get to do if you take the color and line class over on my website, link in the doobly-doo down below. And I have been working on the ideas for these and then the execution of them for weeks now. I have just been in doodle fest mode and I'm, I'm excited to tell you that the class is all put together and it's no longer in pre-registration. It's in full registration. The video from Monday was just those turtles and lesson one is all the other things that are in that picture. And it's called color and line marker and pen. So it uses magic markers of various kinds, alcohol or water-based and pens on social media. Yesterday, I showed some before and after, like what these pictures looked like before with the Copic ink on them, and then the after. These are the afters, so I'll put a link in the doobly-doo if you want to go see the befores. But I added ink to them, whether it's Copic marker ink or pen and ink, various kinds of things. But the way I applied the color was with a cotton ball, so that's what I'll show you in a minute. This was another drawing that I did for a specific reason. I had a video that I posted a reel over on Instagram on my fine art account and it was an iguana and it was not this iguana I did this iguana that I'm going to be posting today on that channel and that's of course the iguana you're going to see in a minute but the iguana that went viral over there was one that was just in pencil it was just a pencil drawing that I did some erasing on with an electric eraser eight and a half million views at the time that I am recording this. I mean, it's crazy. So I thought, okay, well, I'll do another iguana. I want to see if it's the iguana content that went crazy or if it's the eraser or I don't know what it is. Anyway, that that's just why I did an iguana because I'm not an iguana person necessarily. But let's first do the mindless doodle because there's lots less work that goes into this. And it's very easy to make backgrounds out of anything. This happens to be with Copic refills and Copic refills are just the alcohol ink that goes in a pen. And I used colors that I don't re-ink very often. I mean, I just don't use those markers particularly often. So if you've got some re-inkers that you just aren't going to use, this is a great way to get some kind of use out of them because otherwise it's going to sit on your shelf and you've bought it for nothing. So, you know, use up some colors like that or you can do something with watercolor just splashing watercolor and covering the page uh, doing stuff with stamping inks and just squish ink all over the page and do something fun so that you have some patterns and shapes on here and that's what's going to make it easy for you to do the mindless doodling that i'm talking about and it was kind of funny that youtube sent me a link and said hey here's some things that people who watch your videos are Googling. So you should go do a video on these things because that's what they're looking for. And how to doodle was one of the top things. <laughs> so that's why I'm doing this video called how to doodle. So I'm layering in some colors. I was in a fall mode because it is really very much like fall at my house right now. I know some of you are sweltering still, but it's 62 degrees inside my house and I'm wrapped up in blankets. So there's that. So I picked some fall colors to do this with put a line around the outside and I'm going to show you the back of the page because a bunch of people are going to want to know, did it go through? And it only went through a little bit to the next catch page. I have this little thing that I've been slipping inside the sketchbook, but for some reason this paper doesn't leak very much to the other page. Don't know why, but I'll take it. So next up is opening that Peter pen. 
I bought this for myself a while ago, but I said until I got that class done and launched and finished, I could not open my new toy. So I decided to do it. I bought this pen to support Peter, Peter Degladish. He's an artist here on YouTube who has inspired me to start doodling. I was not a doodler until I started getting obsessed with watching his videos. I just put them on and I just kind of like to listen to him talk. He just rambles, which is kind of fun. And he was working with Narwhal and they made a pen and it has his name on it. And I know he's going to make some income from it. So I thought, you know, I don't need another pen, but I'm going to buy it because it supports another artist. So why not? So this pen has beautiful swirls on the outside of it. And as with most fountain pens, screw off the top. And then there's a plunger inside. They call it a piston. And what we'll end up doing is lowering the piston and then raising it up. It's like a turkey baster. If you think about it that way. Sometimes it's a little hard to get it started, but then the piston lowers down. You dip it, the nib of the ink or the nib of the pen into the ink and then squish it back up and it sucks ink into the pen. So that's what I'm doing here is pulling ink into the body of the pen. And I like clear pens so I can see how much is in there and how soon I'm going to have to re-ink. So if I go somewhere with my pen, I'll know how long my pen will last. I just did a little test scribble on that catch sheet that I had. And it felt really good. The, the weight of the pen itself is quite nice. I like a good heavy pen and that's kind of what this one is. So it was a matter of then putting it to the test and doing some drawing with it. Now, mindlessly doodling for me is literally, I'm just not thinking, I'm tracing. I'm looking for shapes that I see in the colors. And I look at where there's a color shift or where there's a, a value shift. Sometimes, you know, there's a light spot or a dark spot. And I just draw lines around stuff and then start decorating different sections with textures or patterns. There's just some that are my go-tos and one of the things that this will do for you if you want to do more kind of fun doodling that's not like this guided kind of doodling, you just want to take a white piece of paper and do some beautiful line work. This is going to help you to develop what your style is because the way that you trace shapes, the way that you see the shapes is going to help to figure out what your hand likes to do and what you do well. And for me, I've started to discover in the past couple months that I like things that have a flow to them, some kind of movement. And that tends to be where my brain goes when I'm doing my mindless doodling is filling something with a series of lines that indicate movement and depth because you curve things in a certain way and they'll end up looking like there's some motion and depth in them. What you do is going to be different than what I do. but Giving yourself a background like this is a great way to have something to start with. You don't have the fear of that white paper, which a lot of people are just terrified of the white piece of paper, but it also gives you, in some instances, some shapes that you might never have thought to draw. So here, when I've got all these little tiny bits, I can trace around them and I get different kinds of lines. And that's going to help me to practice different kinds of lines. And I might discover something in one of these that I suddenly think, well, that's really cool. It would be nice to do a whole drawing with just that or, you know, a section of a drawing with that kind of thing and having it all in a sketchbook like this. So if you fill a sketchbook with backgrounds and then just doodle on them, it's a great resource. So if you're ever trying to do a drawing and you have a section that needs to have some doodling filling in an area, you've got a whole sketchbook full of ideas. The class that that I was talking about earlier in this video, the color and line class would serve as a great resource for that as well. And I'll be using some of the techniques from the class and from this doodle in the background on the iguana. So it kind of all comes together. And I wanted to add some darker black lines in there, something stronger with more contrast. So I used a Copic marker so that I could get that brush nib feel. I could get that thick, thin kind of a line and just add some of it in there. And trying to be strategic about it so I get some motion across the page rather than just 
big old blob of something. There's sometimes when I block out just like giant swaths of the drawing and it adds such drama to it, but I decided on this one, I didn't really feel like doing that. So just adding some smaller portions here and there to divide it into sections that are more visible. So let's talk a little bit about the Peter Pen. And the one that I got is the fine nib. It's the middle size. It's not the, the medium and it's not the extra fine. It's the one in the middle. And I would have to say, I like the weight of it. As I said, it was the first impression I got and it refills just fine and all that kind of thing. It does have a few moments every once in a while and it might be the paper. It might be that. I don't really know. This is the only test I've done with it. Uh, but it does skip periodically. Like it'll do 20 lines just great. And then it'll have one line where it just the first eighth of an inch. It takes a second for it to get going. And I don't know what that is. Sometimes it's just, you know, a pen needing to get warmed up. And that might be the case here. But I'm going to try it on some better paper. This sketchbook is good for lots of things. It's good for lots of mediums, which is the reason I got it, so that I could use different mediums in the same sketchbook for that class. But there are definitely better papers for pen and ink than this one, so I'm gonna try it on some of that. And in a couple of weeks, I'll be back with another video using this pen and give you a more full verdict. Um, if you're someone like me who supports Peter and you want you always wanted to know whether his pens were any good. This one is a decent one. I mean, I, I could definitely say you could certainly get it in support of him, but it's like 60 something bucks. If you're looking for a starter pen and I do have lots of people who leave me questions asking about, you know, their, their first fountain pen, what, what I recommend, I still will recommend getting a Twisby Eco and probably the fine nib, the one in the middle of theirs is a really good starter. And it's, you know, like 30 something bucks instead of 60 something bucks. So this one would be more for people who just want to, you know, they want to try a narwhal pen or do it to support Peter. Cause that's why I bought the pen because, you know, new toy plus supporting an artist whose work I enjoy and am inspired by. So there's my finished doodle and it's something very doable by anybody just trace a bunch of color just put a bunch on the page and if you want to get the peter pen i'll have a link for that in the supplies list now let's take a look at that iguana and i'll tell you some funny stories while i do the drawing of this thing i have no idea why i decided to draw an iguana in that stone paper sketchbook and pencil I just did. It was my pencil week and it was just a picture that inspired me because I thought I could do something interesting with the electric eraser. So maybe it was electric eraser that got it. But, you know, eight and a half million views on any platform is just crazy huge. Out of that, I you know don't ever think that just because a video goes viral like that, that you're going to get a million followers out of eight million people. A million would follow. No. I got like 3,000 followers out of 8 million. So it was not enough to get them all to come follow and learn more about my work or anything, but you know, whatever. So I am really curious about what causes one thing or another to go viral. So that is why I decided to try the, the other lizard, the gecko, and that didn't pop at all. And I'm going to try this one on Instagram and see if that takes off or gets any attention. I don't know. But one of the comments that I saw a bunch of people make, and a lot of people were commenting in other languages and I didn't understand stuff. So I was doing a lot of Google translate to see what people were saying about it. But one of the words that was used regularly and Instagram didn't know how to translate it was the word Jagras, J-A-G-R-A-S. So I had to Google it. I had to see what the heck is this? And there is apparently something called Monster Hunter. I think it's a game. And it says that Jagras are fanged wyverns first introduced in Monster Hunter world. These monsters are members of the great Jagras pack and will flee upon seeing one of their own perish. So I identify with them. Somebody of my own that perishes, I will run away too. They're also known for ambushing larger monsters at a moment's notice. They have been seen inhabiting the ancient forest and guiding lands. They're a smaller monster that travels and hunts in packs, 
Its hide blends in with the forest environment, has characteristic spikes on its back, and if you chase a few away, the rest will usually follow suit. They tend to keep their distance when large monsters enter their territory, but sometimes the entire group will attack if they feel particularly threatened. So maybe it's a gaming thing. I hope all these people don't think that I'm going to have a lot of gaming content on my page, if that's why they followed, because <laughs> they'll be sorely disappointed, because that's not my thing. But Coloring something like this is, is kind of an interesting challenge anyway, and I enjoyed the process of putting all this color down and just mixing the colors to make something that looks like this crazy, crazy beast. So now it's time to start doing the pen work. The process that you're seeing for this is the same for creating everything else in this sketchbook that I did. It's all, you know, drawings that are done in markers, and then we put the pen and ink work on top of it. And if you're, you know, wondering, can I draw these things? They're drawn as loose and rough as this is. And in some cases, looser and rougher. It's the epitome of what a lot of people will say about my work and what I've said a number of times. It's a hot mess until it's not. So if you think you can handle some minimal drawing, like we're not drawing anything crazy like this iguana, but we're doing leaves. Like if you think you can draw leaves, then you might be able to handle this class. And that sort of thing, you'll need to be able to pick your own colors and make your own decisions about that because I'm not going to handhold that part. It's a level four class, but it's just giving you some ideas on how to create some pictures that you can then add pen and ink to. And in the class, I'll show you the still photo of what it looked like before. So you can see what yours might end up trying to look like in color and then what it looks like with the ink on it. And I show you in a couple mediums, each class, each lesson has two videos. So there's like crazy three hours of content in this class. So it's a lot of fun. I don't know if I need to talk about it any more than that, but I'm trying to vamp while I'm waiting for myself to finish this gizzard, this, this uh, crazy lizard. I've been laughing with a friend of mine on Instagram about it because when it first started getting bigger, and like I, at first I had like 55,000 views on it and nobody was commenting and nobody was following. I even lost followers in that first 50,000 views. So like a whole bunch of people left. I have no idea why, but you know, a bunch of people left. And then once it hit like 200,000, 300,000, a little bit more commenting started coming. And then I started getting direct messages from people, often it was young men. And they were young men who were artists. Like they were saying, can you come and give a critique of my work? And of course, so I would, because you know, they asked and it was very nice to, you know, have them request my feedback. And then they would tell me like, well, gee whiz, you're like the only artist who's ever answered me when I've asked that. And I thought, well, that's not very nice. We're not very nice to each other if we're not giving each other help and feedback. Now, Granted, if a million people did that, I wouldn't have any time to do it. But nonetheless, it's been kind of interesting to meet people from other countries and see their work and what they're doing and be able to give them some encouragement. So it's been a lot of fun. I have no idea if I'll ever see any of them in a class or something, but I do hope so. They tend to, as I said, be younger men who are just looking for some help and feedback and and growth. And I hope that I was able to provide that for them. The background here is done, of course, with just scribbles of the marker instead of using the cotton ball, but it's the same idea. Just mushing some colors in here and then dividing it into sections to doodle into. And I made it a little more structured simply because I wanted it to feel like a forest or tree bark or something behind him since it's an actual picture instead of just a doodle. But I'm using a lot of the doodle elements that I used in the doodle that you saw. So you can combine all those things to create a nice finished picture and get inspired by your own doodling in order to do it. So that is my two projects for today. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, click the like button. Subscribe if you have not yet already. And links for everything are in that doobly-doo. And I will see you again next week with some more inspiration to get you rolling. And I hope you have a great weekend. See ya. Bye.